This has never happened before. Yeah. No one has ever gotten in bed with me before. Allison Weiss, you are my first. This is the this I'm is so why I, this is why I think the title of this series is gonna work out really well. Uh-huh, yeah. It's just, wanna, <laughs> you make a lot of jokes. Yeah, there's right, endless predictable jokes. <laughs> Okay, so here we are. We're in bed. Everyone asked for guests, right? Because mm -hmm. they were like, Kristen, you're boring all by yourself. That's wow. not true. That's not true. That's not what they said. What I've decided, internet, is that um, I'm going to invite people to my bed. Technically, this isn't my bed. This is the guest bed, but get it? Because you're... It's the guest bed. It's, it's the guest bed. It's the guest... Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Right? So I'm going to invite people into the guest bed. Yeah. And then we're going to talk about questions that you ask and questions that I have. Maybe give a little bit of advice. Like, we don't even know. It's episode Great. number one. Okay, so somebody who I believe is the person who told you what the National Animal of Scotland is wanted to know if, if you know what the anim National Animal of Scotland is. Um, it's impossible to be on tour with Jenny Owen Youngs in Scotland and forget what the National <laughs> Animal of Scotland is once she's discovered what the National Animal oh, of Scotland is. Oh, well, okay. It's a unicorn, which is not a real animal, but whatever. Wow, Scotland. Does Scotland take offense when you say that? Um, or are they like, we know it's... But I don't know what they... I think they're pretty proud of it. They were like screaming it at the show. They were like, it's a unicorn! And Jenny was like, what? And then I learned it while I was on stage and I was like, okay, you guys. Everyone... But it really, truly... But yeah, I guess the National Animal of Scotland is an animal that doesn't exist, so that's just... Or you could say, like, the National Animal of Scotland is a fucking unicorn. Is a fucking unicorn. I know, maybe I'm being, <laughs> being an asshole. <laughs> Leah wants to know, how did you start writing music and getting into music in general? I don't know the answer to this. Really? Yeah. Gosh, I feel like we've been friends for so long. I know, but when are you ever like, so what made you start writing music? <laughs> yeah, very true, very true. <laughs> um, what made me start writing music? I I grew up in a musical family. My dad played guitar and like sang songs about everything. He was saying that, have you ever heard that like Irish song about the unicorn not making it onto the Noah's Ark? How does it, um... I don't remember it. Come on! I know, I wish I could remember it, but I don't remember it. A long time ago, when the earth was green, there are more kinds of animals than you've ever seen. I got into writing music when I was in high school, um, I guess because... I had a crush on a boy, believe it or not, and um, I wanted You heard to... it here first. <laughs> yeah. And I wanted to impress said boy, and so I started writing songs, and there you go. Wait, wait, okay, so there's this boy that you have a crush on, yep. and you want to impress him by writing songs, so did you play these songs for this boy? Not really. But you were like, one day I'll be a rock star. Yeah. It was like a long Like, a he long played song. guitar, and I was like, I'm going to learn guitar because I want to impress this dude. Then once I learned how to play guitar, I was like, oh, this is the most fun ever. And so then I didn't stop. Ever. See? Crush um, turned positive. Yeah, right? I mean, not that crushes can't turn out positive anyway. Did you ever date that boy? Yeah, we dated for a month, and then he broke up with me in a note. Oh. What did the note say? It said that we were better off as friends. <laughs> And also there was a note that came right before that one, and it was um, uh, a note that I got uh, after we had made out for the first time, uh -huh. and uh, it was a note on how to be a better kisser. Oh, wow. I know, right? As a 15-year-old boy, I don't think that he really had a lot of um, knowledge. Yeah, I don't think, I don't know where he, you know, thought that he knew a lot about how to make out. It, like, legitimately scarred me for, like... Years. Like, I didn't kiss another person for like three or four years because I was so, like, fucked Scarred up. by this Scarred 15 by this year old boy. Which is stupid because I didn't like making out with him anyway. Right. Like, he was probably the one that he was sucked a, at kissing. Yeah, he sucked at kissing and he always wanted to make out after school and I would like avoid him so that we wouldn't have, <sighs> have to, to make, make out. out. Yeah. And then he was like, I can improve this for you. Yeah. Let me explain how to kiss. Yeah. Wow. Sounds like a case of the patriarchy to me. Yeah. <laughs> Rachel wants to know, how do you think your sexuality affects your music and your music affects your sexuality? Do you think you'd be writing and playing different music if you weren't gay? How does my sexuality affect my music? It doesn't. How does my music affect my sexuality? It doesn't. Would I be playing or singing different music if I weren't gay? No. Boom. First of all, from one side of it, I have no idea because I am gay and I have I have no way of knowing that if that my music would be different. But I don't think it would be because um I I don't know, I feel like I write like really universal uh love related songs. Yeah. Nothing I've ever made is like 
specific to the queer community or specific to the straight community, you know, before I came out. Um, Because they were all just like songs about a person wanting another person. Alicia wants to know, Allison, who do you think is going to go to the playoffs in the NWSL this year? I don't even know what that means. Is that soccer? Yes, that means who do I think is going to go to the playoffs in the National Women's Soccer League? I recognize her name. Oh. And she knows exactly who I'm going to say. And that's (laughs) my favorite team, the Seattle Reign. Does this person have an opposition to Seattle Rain? Is mm-hmm. that why they're provoking mm-hmm. conflict? This person's favorite team is the Houston Dash. Oh, and that's uh, like a... Well, you know, the Houston Dash weren't in the playoffs, so wow. it's not that big of a rivalry. This this section is called shit-talking <laughs> with Allison Weiss. Do you want to give a little bit of advice? I'd love to give some advice. So, okay, so... To give you an idea of what this question is, because it's beautifully written. It's like beautifully written. beautifully written, but I'm just going to read a part of it so you all know what we're thinking about here. Some days it feels impossibly awful being 22. It makes me want to punch Taylor Swift in the face and scream, you didn't warn me about this. Also, the person that I was dating and stupidly in love with because I'm stupid and I broke up. My life feels like an Allison Weiss album, Say What You Mean, 2013. How do I possibly enjoy being 22 and not waste it wanting to fast forward through life. I feel like there's there's multiple ways to approach this. First of all, you're not stupid for being in love with someone. So mm-hmm. don't call yourself stupid for falling in love with someone. I sense a lot of like beating yourself up for the ways that you're feeling in this, which is something that I've had a lot of trouble with mm-hmm. and still struggle with a lot. It's so important to not judge yourself based on the way that you feel. When I was 22, the feeling of being really lost was so much more overwhelming Mm -hmm. because I hadn't yet learned that I could feel that lost and then feel better. That's so true. Right? This is, I feel like this is your first time experiencing being lost as fuck. Yeah. And you're gonna get through it. Um, and then the next time this happens, which might be when you're 32, right, right. Um, you'll be like, oh, that was like that other time I was lost. I'm just gonna, you know, put my head down and do things that are fulfilling and mm-hmm. wait it out. You know? Right. And that's the thing is that like now when I'm feeling lost, I'm like, okay, what are things that I know that make me not feel lost? When I was 22, I was like, everything sucks. So I like, I didn't know. I didn't, yeah. even, I didn't know. It's so funny how now we're like... Oh, I'm so stressed out. I gotta get back on my routine. I gotta do yoga and I have to eat well. Blah 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 blah. And you're like 22 and you're like everything sucks. I'm going out tonight. And yeah. I'm gonna get shit hammered. Totally. You know totally. what I mean? And I'm gonna sleep with a stranger. <laughs> and I'm gonna fucking. You know what I mean? Spend all the money that I don't right. have. And there's something beautiful. There about is that. something beautiful about that because you get all this life experience. Right. Um, I went through a super big breakup when I was around 23. Um, circa the album "Say What You Mean." The inspiration for the album, the say what you mean. So this... the album that you said. Mm-hmm. My strategy was just like completely dive into like doing new things and meeting new people, and you know I forced myself to do things that were uncomfortable, like go on OK Cupid dates, um, and things that were physically uncomfortable, like riding my bike long distances around mm. New York City. Definitely, a lot of that was like me putting off like feeling things that I eventually did have to feel, but it. I don't know. I feel like I learned a lot about myself in that process. Well, and you also wrote an album. I did write that an is album. Incredible. <laughs> that is a thing that I did. Whoops! <laughs> I wrote an album. Um, and then. And then you did love again. And then I did love again, and now I'm getting fucking married. Yeah. That was me holding up my engagement ring. So. Yeah, Allison Weiss is getting married. Hey. So. That's what happens. You're 22, you get your heart broken, you write an album, you fall in love again, you get married, and then you get in bed with me and give advice. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Did you ever think that getting in bed with me would be so intense? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, she knew a lot. You had a feeling. (laughs) Cool. (laughs) I'm going to ask every every guest in my bed the same question, which is... um, Big spoon or a little spoon? Oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> I'm a switch hitter. Yeah? You like it both ways? I do like it both ways. I think I default to little. Yeah. I default to the little spoon, but there's a big spoon in me. So, um, next time that someone gets in bed with me, it will be my wife. Uh, Jenny Owen Youngs. I'm glad that I was first. Yeah, you beat you beat Jenny Owen Youngs <laughs> to uh, this shared Christian bed. Um, so first of all, thank you for coming and being with me in this bed. I wish that I could just stay here forever. You can't. You can't. It's the guest room. So technically, all right, great. I'll be back soon. Yeah, okay. <laughs>
<laughs> so next time we'll be back with Jenny. We won't be back. I will be back with Jenny. Um, so if you have questions that you want to ask Jenny, put them below. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed this very first episode of Getting in Bed with Kristen. Woo! Thank you.